Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the Avid Tent Camper. In this video, I want to continue talking about canvas tents. In particular, I want to talk about several of their strengths, that is, reasons why you might want to get one, and then I want to focus on two important limitations that you need to be aware of before you buy one. Stay tuned. In my opinion, the most important strength of a canvas tent is its ability to hold heat longer than a synthetic tent. As a result, you can be very comfortable in cool weather by just simply adding a small heater. We use this small Lasco electric space heater and look for campsites with electricity. We have discovered that it can raise the temperature in our canvas wedge tent up to around 80 degrees where it only raises the temperature a few degrees in our synthetic tent. Because of this heat retention property, canvas tents with heaters have become the clear favorite of hunters, fishermen, and other people that enjoy camping in the cool northern latitudes and in during the winter. The second strength of canvas tents is that they breathe much better than synthetic tents. What this means is that you can close a canvas tent up all night, or even on a cool, damp night, and not have to worry about condensation. Polyester, on the other hand, does not breathe and would hold all the moisture from your breath and from the ground inside the tent. And this moisture or condensation would soak all of your bedding and clothing after a long night of sleeping. The way that polyester tents try to compensate for this lack of breathability is to sew in lots of mesh, but this mesh allows all the heat to escape. A third strength of canvas tents is that they are not as flammable as polyester and nylon materials. As a result, many users feel comfortable using heaters inside of them. Now, we use an electric heater, space heater, but we would not use a flammable heater just for fear of problems. But some campers use wood-burning heaters inside their tents or Mr. Buddy propane heaters. But you should never never use a flammable heater inside of a polyester or nylon tent. A canvas tent will block the wind much better than a polyester tent and feel much more stable. Whereas a polyester tent will have a lot of problems in windy weather. It'll flap loudly and this loud noise could make it difficult to sleep. It'll sometimes bend and distort its shape from the high gust of wind, and it could tear. Another strength of canvas tents is that their material does not degrade as fast as polyester or nylon tents do in direct sunlight. As a result, you'd be much more satisfied with a canvas tent if you frequently set up two-week or longer base camps. Another advantage of canvas is that it's much stronger than polyester. Certainly no one plans to damage a tent, but in camps, accidents frequently occur. People trip over guy lines, they trip over the doorway coming into the tent, Sometimes they stumble on something else and fall against the tent. Sometimes they lean a bicycle up and then it falls against the tent. Sometimes the wind will blow poles and sticks around that will hit the tent. And sometimes limbs, small limbs, will fall off of trees and hit the tent. And any of these events could easily tear a polyester tent, but would be much less likely to cause damage to a canvas tent. If a canvas tent is damaged accidentally, it would be much easier to repair than a polyester tent. You could buy a small canvas or denim patch at Walmart or most other department stores and sew it 
in place with a needle and thread. Now you could put a piece of duct tape on a tear on a polyester tent, but this practice is not recommended. To make a good repair, you really do need a sewing machine and special materials and thread. A final advantage of canvas tents is that they're much quieter than polyester tents. So if you're bothered at night by noise, noise from nearby campers, noise from uh, RVs running their air conditioners, then a canvas tent may be your best bet. But if you like to hear owls and whipwills, cicadas and frogs chirping at night, then you may want to get a polyester tent. Before buying a canvas tent, you should understand that mold, mildew, and rot is a potential problem that could severely damage your tent, and in fact, destroy your tent within a year or two. As a consequence, you must pay particular attention to how your floor is constructed before you buy a canvas tent, and you must spend extra time after every camping trip to dry it completely. If you allow mold and mildew to develop, it will create a foul smell that will be difficult to remove for the rest of the tent's life, and it will weaken the fabric so that they'll be much more likely to rot and tear. First, let's examine floor construction. Our old cabin tent just had a canvas floor, and we were able to get 25 years of life on top of the 10 years of life before we bought it by spending the time to dry it after every trip. The Kodiak Flexpo addresses this problem by sewing a waterproof vinyl floor in their tents. But many canvas tents just have a sod cloth all the way around the edge of their tent. Sometimes this sod cloth is made out of a waterproof tarp-like material, but frequently it's just made from canvas. This canvas can be sprayed with waterproofing material to help reduce moisture absorption. If the tent gets soaked after a heavy rain, you can remove all of the contents and then turn this sod cloth outside the tent to dry. If you own your own land and want to set up a long-term base camp, you should look into building a wooden platform for your canvas tent. The wooden platform will get your tent off the ground and will allow air to circulate under your tent to help keep the bottom dry. And if you want a very nice canvas base camp tent, you should call my friend Scott at Totally Unique Cabins. This is the canvas shack, but all of their tents are built on platforms with canvas walls that do not quite extend all the way down to the floor and wooden siding at the bottom. Since these are semi-permanent structures, similar to those that were built in the late 1800s, you can bring in nice furniture and have a very comfortable camping experience. Several people have asked me how long they could leave a wet tent rolled up. And so I've looked on the internet uh, and through several books, and I cannot find an answer to that question. So let me tell you the Fraser Douglas rule. Uh, my rule is no more than 12 hours. If I pack a wet tent up at 8 o'clock in the morning, I feel like I must have it open by 8 o'clock at night. Now, if I'm in a new campsite, I just set that tent up. But if I go home or go to a motel, I've got to open that tent up so that it can dry. And if that tent is packed in a hot vehicle, that 12 hours may actually be too long. So, which type of tent is best for you, canvas or synthetic? I believe the answer to that question depends on where you camp, when you camp, and how you camp. If you're like me and you like to take a lot of short camping trips, two, three, four day trips in 
hot, humid weather, I believe the synthetic tent probably is your best choice. But if you like long-term base camps, especially in cool or windy weather, then you probably would be happier if you bought a canvas tent. I hope this information is helpful, and I wish you lots of enjoyment in your future camping trips. For more information about canvas tents, please visit my Facebook page, Modern Tent Camping. I have posted several articles and videos related to canvas tents. And also visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping. <laughs>